Welcome everybody to the New Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. In today's show, I'm here with Brian Chan and Don Peterson from the Freshwater Fisheries uh, Society of BC. We're going to be talking about what the society is doing in British Columbia to enhance and improve the fishery. It's already a great resource and they're going to make it better. We're also going to be talking about still water tactics here on Leighton Lake. It's going to be a great show. Stay with us. The new fly fisher is made possible thanks to grants from Scientific Anglers, Sage Fly Rods, Loon Outdoors, Orvis Sporting Traditions, Frog Hair Products. Scott Fly Rod, Water Skeeter, Islander Fly Reels, Clacka Craft, R.L. Winston Fly Rod, and viewers like you. Today we're fly fishing near Kamloops, British Columbia. This area of BC has grown to be famous because of the quantity and size of the trout available. More importantly, there's over 200 lakes within a few hours drive of Kamloops, making this both an affordable and accessible location for anglers. We got started first thing in the morning this cool October day as the forecast was calling for high winds by the afternoon. The lake we're fly fishing on is approximately one hour from Kamloops. Renowned stillwater fly fisher, author and biologist Brian Chan is my guide for the next few days. Joining us today is Don Peterson, who is the president of the Freshwater Fishery Society of BC. Can you explain a little bit of what we've got a boat? We've got two different sinking lines on. Don's got a a very slow intermediate sinker. You've got a clear. You mean Don's got the hot rod? Oh, there's a nice one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. Jeez, he's coming right to the boat. Strip that line. <laughs> and I'll just be the net boy. You know, that's okay. Oh, come on now. Oh, I. Whoa, oh. whoa, whoa. Well, a bar of chrome. Beautiful fish. <laughs> I think I've foul hooked him, you know. I think no. he's. Oh, you got him in the. I think got him on the right outside of the, the eye. Whoa. That's why he's not happy. Yeah, he's not acting very happy at all. Oops. Oh, jeez. There you go, Don. I'll let you release him. Oh, yeah. It's an unfortunate hooking spot here. Yeah. Oh, welcome. Yeah, I did. Well, that's not his good side. <laughs> yes. Nice. Beautiful fish. Don's fishing with a slow intermediate. We're only in seven feet of water right now, and we're casting even shallower. You can see some weeds sticking up ahead of us. But obviously, the fish are jumping here, so we just want to... What we're trying to do is bring the flies over the top of the vegetation. And Colin, you've got a, a clear intermediate sinker. I've just put on my floating line with a strike indicator to see if I can just dance that fly over the top of the weeds and keep it suspended there. So three different techniques, um, all with leeches though. And there's a lot of leeches in this system? There's a lot of leeches in this lake, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> oh, it's another. 
Another one for the... Oh. <laughs> you might get the prize today, Don. For... That's three. That's pretty good fish, right? Eh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, there we go. Boy, look at that fish, eh? Hardly a spot on him. Not a spot on him. It wasn't clipped. That's a good sign. What's that? It wasn't clipped, so that's a good sign. Oh, thanks. Brian, get the... Excuse me. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> that's already done. He'll bring it over. Bring it over. Check my head. That's a nice fish. Now these fish are so strong because they're eating so well, right? And and it's cold. I'd say the water rate, without even putting a thermometer in there, it's about 46 right now. Perfect day to do some snorkeling. <laughs> and uh, what elevation are we at? We're at, uh, I think we're at about 3,700 feet in elevation. Here on there. Oh, he's off. Now the fish seem to be, they're just, this is like a big bowl here we are and it's got a pretty common slow decline into deeper water. Yeah, we're on a, actually right on a fairly flat shoal right now. And uh, we're just casting to the edges of the weeds, just bringing them over the stop, over the edge of them and then we're dropping down. And they're, cr they're probably cruising back and forth right in front of that weed line. Now the rainbows here, you tend to find their schoolers or they uh, disperse once they get up onto the feeding areas. Yeah, they can be dispersed, but usually, as you get closer to freeze up, the fish really congregate in very precise areas. And this particular bay is on this lake is always good in the fall. Little guy, but wow, look at the energy, oh. guys! These are the small ones are, are really. No, this oh. is. Now, you were saying to me earlier, Brian, and when we were at the vehicles, that we're using the uh, leech patterns at this time of year because there's not a lot of insect activity. I mean, they can be eating on the scuds and things like that, but they're looking for a bigger meal because they're getting ready for the winter, right? Ag, they're getting very aggressive. You can see where these fish are hitting the flies pretty hard today. And they're, that water's cooling down and, oops, they know uh, winter's coming. So anything that's gonna swim by their face, if it looks at all, like a big tasty food item, they're gonna take a grab at it. And there's a lot of leeches in this lake. And this, there's a good population of leeches. Now, is there any bait fish in the system? or no, is it... It, this is a monoculture, just rainbow trout only. So the thing I'm noticing, the... Brian, is that like, over the last couple days, we found that slowing the retrieves down was necessary because the, the bite was off and the fish were a little bit passive. And today, I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. ripping it, and they're, that's, what they're, yeah. that's, like, uh -huh. that's what they're looking for. When, when we see on these lakes here, when they're at, on any lake, when they're active, like we see them splashing and jumping, they're, they're in the mood. And you can, and when you're fishing mm -hmm. patterns like leeches, you can move them faster through the water because you'll you'll attract a, one of those cruising fish that are really moving around looking for food. I see fish moving all the way to shore now, way in there. Weed. Weed or? Oh, it's a little fish. <laughs> I'm so surprised it's been such a long time. Oh! No, I, I you went switched to, to that mini sink tip. You guys are hooking too many. I had, to, <laughs> <laughs> I had to get with the program.
Don, explain a little bit about the number of anglers that are using the resource and how that relates to the fishery. Sure. Um, yeah, annually we sell about uh, about 350,000 angling licenses in the province. Now they about 85% uh, of those are residents of the province. But that doesn't include juvenile anglers. It's that's uh, only anglers age 16 and over. We uh, we estimate that there's about another 200,000 anglers, so a, t a total of about 550,000 people using the resource each year. And uh, it's many. A lot of people don't understand the economic benefits that those anglers bring to the, the rural communities of the province. The total uh, expenditures by anglers, by freshwater anglers in the province, uh, is about half a billion dollars a year, so about 500 million dollars. Uh, much of that spent in rural communities, like these communities uh, here, uh, Kamloops, uh, uh, Logan Lake, uh, Clearwater, many of these other interior uh, uh, sm small towns and, and cities. And the another thing people don't understand is the impact the stocking program, or the role the stocking program plays in that fishery. There's about uh, 25,000 lakes in the province over 10 hectares in size. Uh, of that 25,000, 1,000 are stocked. But in those 1,000 lakes, roughly 50% of the angling effort takes place. So the stocking program, despite its relatively small size relative to the wild fisheries, plays a, uh, you know, very, a major role. The other thing is, uh, the, uh, virtually all of the, the large recreational fisheries are stocked fisheries. Uh, for example, Sheridan Lake, uh, up near Williams Lake, supports, whoa, there's a nice fish. <laughs> oh, that's a little better. <laughs> I sure took hard, anyway. <laughs> uh, Sheridan Lake supports 250,000 angler days a year. So that's, uh, very large fishery and totally dependent on the stocking program. Gee, he hit like a freight train, but... <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful fish. Adipose? Adipose. Left, left max, or left, left uh, max. So that's a Zenzik at Rainbow. Yeah, so the, these uh, thousand stock lakes, the other uh, thing that people uh, maybe don't understand is that about 85% of those thousand lakes are uh, totally dependent on the stocking program. There's no uh, wild fishery or wild uh, population to speak of. And that's um, mostly because Many of these small interior lakes don't have uh, sufficient spawning habitat to support wild trout populations. Historically, there were no fish in these lakes, um, but uh, they provide excellent uh, conditions for trout to grow, so they're just uh, tailor-made for a trout stocking program. One of the key aspects of stillwater fly fishing is to understand what forage is available to the fish at differing times of the year. The lakes around Kamloops feature large amounts of wheat growth, which in turn provides cover and food for a diverse spectrum of insects and other aquatic life. The abundance of aquatic food, combined with aggressive stocking programs, has resulted in large-sized trout in large numbers. The wheat growth in the lakes near Kamloops are typical of lakes throughout North America. It is surprising how many anglers in the east do not focus in on the insect activity on their local lakes to catch both trout and other species such as bass. Brian Chan took some time to collect various types of forage we could find in this lake, such as caddis, leeches, and damselflies. He also took time to explain the importance different species play at different times of the year. So we've got a water boatman coming through the frame there, uh, juvenile calabatus mayfly nymphs right there. There's a boatman in the background. And we've got some shrimp zooming back and forth in the background as well. On the bottom right now, right below the throat pump, 
our, our three Calabatus uh, mayfly nymphs. They're one year old, they were hatched this spring and they'll be emerging next uh, May and June. Uh, the shrimp that are in this aquarium, you can see we've got several sizes of them. The shrimp are very prolific and uh, they're available as a food source for trout year round basically. And they become a very important food item at this time of year, late in the fall. The mayfly nymphs that you see are this year's offspring. Um, they hatched from eggs probably in May and June of this year and will be emerging as the adult mayfly next May and June. And so they're most uh, fed upon uh, during that May-June period when they're migrating up through the water column to emerge as the adults. There's also some water boatmen in the aquarium here. And water boatmen are most active in the spring, right after ice off. And then again, late in the fall, when they go on mating and swarming flights. So they're quite seasonal in, in their availability as well. What we're looking at here is a Limnophilidae caddisfly larvae. Built. It's in its casing, and um, it's the big traveler sedge or the big lake, big still water caddis that emerges. Um, there's leeches in the aquarium here as well, and also some damselfly nymphs that will uh, be maturing next spring and emerging into the adults, probably mid June to late June. The leeches we see here uh, are very long lived in a lake. Uh, they can live for upwards of five to seven years. They're available as a food source throughout the entire year. They're more nocturnal in their movement patterns and uh, during daylight hours like to hide amongst the rocks or under logs, under structure at, you know, on the shoulder of the rural zone of the lake. Don, one of the things that uh, a lot of people are wondering about, because this is a, a, a really new thing, this uh, Freshwater Fisheries uh, Society of BC. What is its mandate and where are you going with it? Well, the mandate of, of the society is to, um, it's really threefold. Uh, one, to provide um, services to the, to the province uh, that will support the development of the recreational fishery. So that really uh, the major focus being the operation of, of the hatchery program. Uh, the second focus is providing uh, the province with conservation services and uh, specifically uh, conservation fish culture services, so the operation of uh, programs to help restore things like the, uh, the white sturgeon in the Columbia River or in the Kootenai River. And uh, we also operate a living gene bank for steelhead. And the third area is the marketing and promotion of sports fishing in the province. Yeah. Beauty. Just dropped anchor. Oh. Whoa! Whoa, almost <laughs> in the boat. <laughs> Great fish. Oh! Just had a hit. Oh, what a nice fish. You want a hand? That's a beautiful fish. Very nice line. Now, you were saying to me earlier when we were uh, on the other side of the lake that there are certain uh, species that you've been really focusing on because they have either good survivability, good growth rates, uh, the fighting qu qualities of the species are good, etc. Which ones are those? Well, uh, to, to give you an example, um, one of the, the problems we've had with a number of these, uh, these interior landlocked lakes, which did not contain fish historically and were stocked with trout uh, decades ago and then are restocked annually, is the illegal introduction of, of coarse species. And there, there was a time where we were able to get permission to, or the fisheries program was able to get permission to go in and uh, basically poison out the, the uh, rehabil rehabilitate the lake, as uh, we used to call it, 
poison out the coarse fish and then restock it with trout again so the fishery would, would return. But those, that approach is no longer acceptable to, uh, to the public. And so in order to um, respond to that, we've, uh, one, of the, one of the things we did was to go and uh, try to identify a, a trout strain that could compete successfully with these coarse fish. I met with Grant Gale from the Clearwater Trout Hatchery, who told me a little about the stocking program in this region of BC. Clearwater Trout Hatchery is part of uh, a program of five hatcheries that is uh, dedicated to stocking freshwater lakes and streams with trout, kokanee, and other salmonid-type species for freshwater anglers. Uh, we produce a produce about 9 million fish every year. We stock approximately 1,100 lakes and streams throughout the province. The species of, species of fish that we produce here at Clearwater Trout Hatchery, we actually produce, are kokanee and rainbow trout. We're the only hatchery in the section that produces kokanee. Uh, all the other five hatcheries produce rainbow trout, the variety of strains of each. Um, we stock another fish called the, the brook char, which is a, a salvelina species. Uh, but we don't grow them here. Those fish are actually transferred to this facility from another hatchery. Once the eggs are collected from the, from the wild stock at the lakes, they're transported to the hatchery. Uh, we bring them in, we'll surface disinfect the eggs to uh, eliminate bacteria and reduce potential, uh, potential of virus infection. Then we'll incubate the eggs uh, for a period of time until the eyes develop in the embryo. At that point, we'll separate any non-fertilized eggs from the fertilized eggs and continue to incubate until the fish hatch. Well, once the fish uh, hatch, they'll live on their yolk sac for a while until they use all that up, and then we'll put them into the containers out in the rearing room um, where they'll swim up off the bottom once their swim bladder starts to develop. At that point, we'll be feeding them, cleaning on a daily basis, and generally letting them grow and get prepared for uh, release. Oh, nice fish. This guy really whacked it. Whoa, oh, it's not actually that big. Oh, oh, that's that's big. Oh. Look at that. So you want to net this one? Yeah, I think ahead, so. Okay. Can you get this one for me, Don? Sure. Great. Now what I did was I was watching you because you had that last strike and so I slowed my retrieve down because earlier I had been uh, stripping it a little quicker so I slowed it down that seemed to do the trick. I think these fish aren't as aggressive as they were earlier on. Nope. Nice fish. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, a little, uh, a little bow in my uh, leader there. Okay. They're really strong. Yeah. Do you want to take them? No. All right, all right. So we're yeah. using barbless hooks, which is really making it easy to facilitate getting Oh, like it fell it. right out. Already fell out, isn't that great? Isn't that a beautiful fish? Yeah. Silver bright. It's strong. I mean, he's, he's fighting like a five, six pound trout does on many streams that I fish. Very, very strong. And again, it goes back to the amount of food they have in them, eh, uh, Brian? In terms of the, the food that they're getting here, and it makes them very strong, and then the cold water, I mean, all these things combined. And the, and the strain of, and the stock of food. Yeah. I think we've got a, I don't know if you can get I think it's retie time. Looks like it. <laughs> We've had a great day here on the lake. As you can see, the wind's really blown up. It's basically pushed us off the lake. There's some times that you can't deal with the wind, and the best thing you can do for safety's sake is just get off the water and just take it easy. Brian and Don, we had a great time, and they talked a lot about the society and what they're going to be doing here in the inland fisheries here in BC. It's going to be a great thing. From all of us here at the New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. The new fly fisher is made possible thanks to grants from
R.L. Winston fly rod. Clacker craft. Islander fly reels. Water skeeter. Scott fly rod. Frog hair products. Orvis sporting traditions. Loon outdoors. Sage fly rods. Scientific anglers. And viewers like you. To order a copy of your favorite New Fly Fisher episode, contact us at our website at www.thenewflyfisher.com or call us toll free at 1-877-529-0696. Copies of this educational series make an excellent gift for your favorite angler or friend, and they also make a great addition to your reference library. $14.95 for one VHS tape plus shipping and handling. Now also available on DVD.